Lana. And welcome back to my channel. I'm bringing you guys another apartment tour. This is like our second, third year doing this. And I'm very excited because we're going to the East Village, finally. I've been wanting to do a video in the East Village for a while now. There's this really cool model designer named Devin who slid in my DMs, was like, come check out my space. I said, say less, I'll be there. She has this really incredible like lofted studio set up. So if you've seen these before, you know it's time for a little history lesson. So let's talk about the East Village. The definition of the East Village is a little bit complicated. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna say that it kind of ranges from Houston to the area of Bowery and Third Ave up to 14th. So now this is a fun neighborhood to talk about the history of. So buck on up kids. The East Village has been the birthplace of so many trends and movements. So historically, this area was kind of known as the first stop for new immigrants. It actually was originally once a sprawling farm owned by the Dutch governor, Peter Stuyvesant, and that's why there's this place called Die Towns, all thanks to our guy Peter. In the 1840s and 1850s, like I said, it was a really popular spot for incoming immigrants, especially German immigrants who really created a home and a large community here, and then eventually as well as Hungarians, Poles, Ukrainians, and Russians. And there's actually still a really big Ukrainian population here today with this cultural enclave that's commonly referred to as Little Ukraine. So now let's take a huge jump and fast forward to the 1960s. And this is when this neighborhood became associated with the counterculture. There's this huge art and punk and poetry movement that came about in the late 60s and early 70s. And living here was kind of this like rite of passage for people of a certain age and inclination. Um, all the great rock and punk bands in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s came through here. Even one of the very famous Led Zeppelin covers was shot on St. Mark Street, which is a very popular street in the East Village. It was also known as kind of the birthplace of punk rock. It was really big too for beatneck writers and poets like Allen Ginsberg. These days it's obviously quite different. Manhattan has shifted a ton, but I will still say it's kind of this like more affordable, take that with a grain of salt, affordable first stop in Manhattan. It's still a great mix of like mostly somewhat affordable restaurants and like divey bars. There's a lot of like eclectic artists as well as a ton of NYU students. Of course, it's not what it was back in the day, but I will say compared to other neighborhoods in downtown Manhattan, it definitely still has a little bit of that kind of grungy rough somewhat crusty feeling to it. So that's a little bit on the East Village. I'm very excited to show you guys Devin's apartment. First, I wanna say thanks real quick to our sponsor for today, BetterHelp. If you've seen my videos, you know I've used BetterHelp for a very long time now. They actually were my first ever like intro into therapy was using BetterHelp. If you're unfamiliar with BetterHelp, it's basically the world's largest therapy service that's 100% online. Through BetterHelp, you can get connected to basically a huge network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists. To get started, you basically answer Answer a couple questions about your needs and preferences so BetterHelp can help you find the best match. Then you, you know, connect with your therapist and you can talk however you most feel comfortable, like texting, calling, video calling. And also if your therapist isn't a good fit, you can change really easily, completely for free. With BetterHelp, you get that same like professionalism and quality you'd get in person, but from the comfort of your home, home, which I really love and often at a more affordable price. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, you can get 10% off your first month using this link here and that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Of course, everything will be linked down in the description below for you to check out. So on that note, let's go ahead on over to Devin's apartment, check it out. Welcome to my studio. My name is Devin. I'm gonna give you guys a tour. You know it's getting hard to tell if we're in heaven or in hell. In You're in my lofted studio right now in the East Village, and I pay $2,500 a month. a lofted studio, I like to call it. I decided to keep my wardrobe over here. Most of the things, including this, are all found objects. Facebook Marketplace this is my best friend. This is my first apartment by myself and I just had to make it very personal, so I just kind of started drawing on things as I do everything else. This is how Adam was created and some fingies touching and I just thought it kind of like gave it more depth. Is that a little J? Oh! <laughs> yes, this is my friend's <laughs> first, um, cigarette that she <laughs> pulled, mm. but uh, we were very proud, so we, we just put that on I display. That. These are like my little table books that I grabbed probably the most. How to meditate in the artist's way. This was like the first magazine I was in for designing, which I was like super, super proud of, so have to show it off. Almost every painting in here is mine. The flower arrangement was from this girl that I'm really inspired by. Her name's like Lindsay Verconic. She's one of the people that got me kind of believing that I could start designing and sewing things. 
I'm a fake California person because I actually skate more in New York. It is the nicest thing to get you from point A to B. Just holding it, people are like, oh, but you actually, you actually use that. I'm like, obviously. So this is my main like corner. I probably spend the most time in my apartment, like here. Having the loft, I was really, really keen on getting a pullout. In the summers, it's really, really hot makes a huge difference sleeping up here versus up there. This is my disco ball. It's like kind of corny, but like, God, I just love the light it brings. This is like a funky little guy. This is a sake glass. Any Asian like artwork is really like cool to me. I don't feel super comfortable mimicking it, but I'll like give it life and honor it here in some ways. This piece was actually upcycled. It was my old roommate's super basic white Ikea mirror. I painted this gold around the rims to kind of give it more of like an antique feel. And then I painted this little girly on there. So you see a lot of Love female her. forms around here. I think if you like look at objects and especially like design and furniture and you kind of look at it as like, what could this become? I do the same when I'm thrifting. Like I look at it as like a means to like mess with. This is my creative corner. I actually used to have my dresser over here and this was over there. And I do think technically that did look better. But after having my first art studio, I kind of realized like it's expensive. Like right now I just want to have a place that I can also just like create till like the middle of the night or whenever. So here I'm either painting or I'm designing things. Realistically, this is always up here. And I like to keep this like area by the light because then I can like really just get in the zone. And this was another Facebook marketplace grab. I got this in the Bronx. It was in like a big plastic bag. It looked like we were like carrying a body from the Bronx. This is the seatbelt purse. This is the new minis that are coming out. And actually I saw it was your birthday, so I made it for you. What? No, you did not. I'm just gonna say I need to get one. Stop! No, I was like, oh shit. So, Wait, I'm so excited. Yeah. That's so sweet. Oh, hell yes. This is my seatbelt purse. Mm -hmm. This is my first, like, main product they came out with. Um, and it was honor of my grandmother. She had, like, a great minivan. And so, like, over quarantine, I was like, you know what? I had this weird design in my head. I'm bored. There's a sewing machine here. Like, I'm gonna figure this out. And so that's kind of, like, a unique story of how I kind of shifted from painting, which is what I actually majored in, to design. Like, it's kind of mind-boggling that I'm doing this now, but I just can't stop and I'm obsessed with this. Damn. And kind of just, just make it, like, really personal. I put in the logo, like, I said this was, like, made by Devin with, like, for your enjoyment. It says the addition number, so it's, like, a little piece of art. I'm very quick with my paintings. Like, I like to have at it, and then I just, like, look at it, maybe add some. So to do something very slow and methodical is very different for me. If you can, hide your hamper behind a mirror. Do it. It's always like, how do I make this feel spacious? What can I like take away? Like I'm always trying to take, take, take away and like reduce it to like what I need, what like gives me energy and inspires me. And so this is my closet. I keep a lot of my scraps and things that I want to possibly upcycle into something here. This is an old limited two purse. This was like actually kind of more inspired by like my older stuff. It was very linear. So I kind of just wanted to make something kind of album covery and weird. And this was just like meditation for me. <laughs> my mini kitchen. I'm also very proud of this because this was gone, these were gone. So imagine this is all you have to work with. And I cook, so this was scary. I put in these shelves, I went to my friend's wood shop in Greenpoint called Live Edge. Got my favorite coffee, no requests, that's very important. And I actually did this little illustration. Basically with a small space, if you can, like use the height, that's my, that's my little that's trick. That's a good tip. This is my bathroom. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in here. I have to take baths. Like, keeping this really white, really clean, really fresh so that when I am in here taking a bath or doing what I'm doing, it's relaxing is really important. This is the only other artist featured in my apartment. Her name is Min Kong Poop. <laughs> and when I asked her, I was like, hey, like, what do they represent to you? And she was like, this is my like social anxiety displayed through these little creatures. And I just like fell in love with them. And they're just so cute and vulnerable. up top, we're in the loft. This is where I feel like I'm like completely away from the world and I love that about the loft. Yeah, I feel like a little Rapunzel up here. And this is just like very separate from the noise and the craziness down there. My profession is uh, modeling and designing. Yeah, designing and modeling is just very symbiotic and cool and fun and it's constantly evolving. I make a lot of the stuff that I wear 
including like this and these guys. My brand is Devise. Uh, my name's Dev, so Devise is to like carefully like construct something and it's engineering and it's manipulating fabric and it's sculpting. I'm from Northern California. I went to college at UC Santa Barbara and played volleyball there. And I've been here for about three years and I've been in this apartment for two. I'm very proud of like the way I can create so much stuff from here and how I've managed to make my studio, my art studio, my living studio, and combine those. I will describe my design style or my interior design as being somewhat Scandinavian, somewhat eclectic, and then just very in line with like my art. For like using a small space, it's all about, you know, implementing like feng shui, like does this feel good? Do I am I forced to be looking at this or looking at light? Like, you know, it's all trial and error. Like I read this book about that and it's just like you kinda of move something and you sit with it, feel it. Describe the East Village, what do you love about the East Village? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes, like that annoying like kid in the classroom, yep. it's like way too loud. Kind of reminds me of home in San Francisco because it's funky, feels like hate Nashbury in San Francisco to me. It's the closest I could get to Brooklyn and Manhattan with being in Manhattan for work. It's very like comfortable, I feel very comfortable. I like to be very independent, walk out of my apartment and feel like I'm kind of enclosed in culture and people. There's a lot of punk rock energy here, um, a lot of college kids here. Sublease a place for like six months. It's super easy. I would do something like kind of end of summer into winter so you actually get a taste of it. My favorite things about New York is the culture, the melting pot, the stimulation, the speed, the artistic ability. Like everyone's really like looking out for each other. Everyone's really alive and raw. And that can come off as mean, but it's it's real and it's like super exciting. And I go places and I it's very identifiable that that's not there in other places. So it's something that's like very special and very unique and everyone should definitely at least get a taste of. Yay! She crushed it.